Now the next asango means not attached. not attached. I am not attached. It is all knowledge. I am not attached to knowledge. Consciousness itself is knowledge. Yeah, and it is throwing out knowledge like the sun is itself light and it is throwing out light. Is it attached to the sun rays that are going far away from it? No. So I am knowledge and I am projecting knowledge. There is no attachment, a sangu. How do I see this? A part of me is always detached from whatever is happening. Have you noticed? Let it be the biggest drama going on in the family. A part of me is unconcerned, not attached. Very naturally, there is this dispassion, there is this detachment. And then suddenly, your, the ego jumps in and says, Oh, I'm supposed to be attached. I'm the mother, I'm the father, I'm the family member, I'm the sister, the brother. I'm supposed to be involved. And then you come back into your false pretense and start the whole thing. But you're very naturally detached. A mother is very naturally detached even from her child. We consider that the biggest attachment, right? Mother and progeny. A mother is very naturally detached from the child. That's why every night she can forget about her child sleeping next to her and go into deep sleep. No child, gone. Yeah? All that attachment is just the waking state role play. Can you recognize this? So experiment with this. Experiment with your strongest attachment, whoever that is. And bring to memory that some incident with this strongest attachment. And you'll see you're very naturally detached. You pretend to be attached. And you pretend only when you remember the role of this body-mind in relation to that. Waking state, a sango is clear. Same thing happens in the dream state. In the dream state, I'm so attached to the dream world. And the moment I become the witness, what happens? It drops away, a sango. I'm no more attached. I was running from the tiger, there was fear in me, I was attached. And suddenly I become a witness. Oh no, I'm just dreaming. There is no real tiger chasing me. No, no, I'm just dreaming. The dream falls away. Fear falls away. Fear falls away means attachment falls away. I recognize I am detached. Naturally detached. I see this so easily in a dream. Yeah, in the waking, I instantly fool myself. I get a glimpse of truth. There is a moment of truth. Even in the strongest attachment episode, whatever is going on, drama, there is that little glimpse of truth showing me I'm not attached here. But then, no, I'm the father. I'm supposed to be attached. That false pretense comes in and again, I get into my fake story.
Nispraha. I am beyond desire. Beyond the feverishness of desire. Now beyond desire means two things. And beyond the ability to generate a desire and then beyond the ability to suppress a desire. Both fall under the same umbrella, huh? And beyond both. Yeah, means I'm complete. I have both. I have the freedom to desire and I have the freedom to suppress my desire. I have both. I'm complete. I'm purna, right? Why do I have the freedom for both? Because I am beyond both. I see this in the waking state. Yes. I have a desire to show off. I show off. And I say, yeah, see, you watch. I have a desire. I'm not going to show. I want to. But I'm not going to show. I want to. But I'm not going to show. I have the ability to suppress desire. Yes. I have the ability to be absolutely desireless. When there is no generating of desire, no suppression of desire, being beyond, absolutely desireless. Yes, no thought, not even a little inkling of that. Being desireless. So I'm beyond. When you are in the witness, you don't feel the passion that you generate while expecting the result. When the result is here, you do not really feel so happy. Have you seen it? Yes. Yeah. Who was expecting a result? Mind. The mind had created. It creates and it, it builds on it. Oh, this will happen, then this will happen, then I will get this, then I'll be so happy, then this will happen. It builds on that. That is the mind story. So the mind story keeps on building that I will really feel so happy. Yes, the mind does that. Yeah, when I actually get that, the feverishness of the mind woof, comes down. This whole castle that was created, that feverishness of craving collapses. After the collapse of the craving, what happens? Naturally, I take a stand beyond the body, mind and rest as the witness. Collapse of craving means collapse of thought. Collapse of thought means the wave goes back into the nothingness. I rest as the gap, as the witness. I was expecting all this happiness to happen. Yes, that whole feverishness for the happiness to happen has collapsed. And there's this complete nothingness. In that nothingness, in that witnessing state, in that absolute awareness state, there is no joy felt that was expected to be felt. Mm. Because I'm already full. I've come to the witness. I came to the witness because I got kicked out of the mind because of the collapse of the craving, collapse of the big castle of expectation. All of it came crumbling down. The mind ended, the thought ended, it relaxed. The feverishness relaxed. And I rested as the witness. I'm full, I'm complete. That's why I don't feel the happiness that I expected to feel. The pleasure that I thought I will get at the end of the result. Have you noticed this? Once it is mine, once I've possessed it, the whole feverishness, the craving, the mind story collapses down. Everything ends. There is no more, no story left. It was the story that was building up a goal to reach, a happiness that I will get, a carrot at the end. Oh, I will get it. I will get that carrot. I will get that carrot. I will get that carrot. You finally get it, but everything collapses with it. The carrot also collapses into the nothingness. There's nothingness left. You're already feeling full at nothingness, so you don't feel the pleasure of getting that object.
Yes, now is this clear? Nispraha, nispraha. Beyond desire. Next word is shanto. What is shanto? Peace. Peace. What is the meaning of peace? Absence of the peak and absence of the valley. That is what is peace. Peace is a straight line graph. Absence of the peak, absence of the valley. Absence of the ups and downs. Which means there is no great pleasure. Pleasure is not equal to peace. Pleasure itself is painful. Have you realized this yet? Yeah, when you are in Samadhi, we did the nothingness meditation, the nothingness Samadhi yesterday, Shunyata. There was a point where there was nothing. No sensations, no thoughts, no feelings, no perceptions. Absolutely everything was quiet. There was nobody. And if you really did Adishthana and did not move at all, there was no question of disturbance. When you move, there is a disturbance in that nothingness. Sensation arises means there is disturbance. Yeah. If you didn't move, there was no sensation even, no perception. And if we got to a point where we completely masked sounds, could not hear sounds, could not... There was no disturbance from the external environment. You came to absolute peace, that equanimity, that straight line graph. It was like a still lake. The lake without a ripple. Yes? In that, even if there is a smile, what is it? It is a ripple in the lake. It is a disturbance. Even a happy feeling is a disturbance in peace. Do you recognize? Mm -hmm. So peace is devoid of pleasure and devoid of pain. That is the meaning of Shanto. That is what I am. And that is my nature in the deep sleep. In waking, when I do samadhi, I recognize it. Absolute stillness. It's not a dead stillness. Not that eerie stillness. It is a brilliant stillness. 
That is peace. I have recognized that in the week. What about the dream? When do I recognize Shanto in the dream? Beautiful. In the gap between two dreams. When a dream falls off for the witness, when the witness recognizes the dream falls off. Oh, I am Shanto. Okay, the last two words are one sentence. Brahmat samsara vani va. My only problem is I am disillusioned that I am in this samsara. Brahma. This is not Brahman and it's not Lord Brahma. Yeah, this is Brahm. Brahm means delusioned. Yeah. Brahmat samsara vani va. I am illusion that I am in this samsara. What is samsara? The world. This illusion is there in the waking very clearly. It is there in the dream. How is it there in the deep sleep? I am absent. That ignorance, I am absent. Who is absent? I. Who is assuming that I to be? The body-mind personality, I was absent there. Even my mind was absent there. Yes? That is the Brahm. This is very simple to see, right? I assume I am this body-mind. What am I assuming? The snake is real. The water in the mirage is real. I'm not seeing it as an illusion yet. I get trapped in samsara. I get trapped in this world. I believe the tiger is real. I believe the butterfly is real. And the fake stories go on and on. And they multiply my miseries. Same miseries are multiplied in the dream. I see the multiplication of misery in my dream as well. That is why in the dream, I am so fearful. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. I'm fearful and suddenly I wake up. Oh. Yeah, that fear, that whole being in samsara, that entire thing was so real for me. The illusion was not an illusion, it was real. I was trapped in it. Now I'm free of the trap. So it is so easy to see this Brahm, this delusion that I have. It's so easy to see it and acknowledge it. 
The only thing I need is the courage to say, I'm done. No more faking. No more pretense. I'm going to hold on to this truth. Yes. Back to authenticity, the promise of authenticity. Yes. Not going to hold on to this untruth, this lies, this fake, this pretense. I'm done with it. That completes the verse.